Good morning, all of you. Today we will discuss uh, the voltage regulation of an alternator. The voltage regulation of an alternator, what is a voltage regulation? Say, what are the voltages generated in an alternator? That is called as, when there is no load, that is called as the no load EMF. Okay. So, when you lo loading the alternator, the terminal voltage of the alternator, the load side is decreasing. Okay. So, why this terminal voltage is decreasing? No, that is already discussed in the previous classes. So, uh, due to this IRA drop, due to leakage reaction drop, due to arm to reaction drop. So, all these, due to all these drops, now the terminal voltage at the load side is decreasing. Okay. So, that means there is a change in voltage. What are the load is, what is the voltage generated at the alternate side and what is the voltage is at the load side. There is a change in voltage from the, that is load voltage and the no load EMF. Okay. So, now here can define this voltage regulation. See, the voltage regulation is defined as the change in voltage from no load to full load. So, keeping the field excitation and the speed constant. Okay. That is called as the voltage regulation of alternator. That is, suppose say, uh, if BPS is the rated voltage, terminal voltage, and EP is the no load EMF. So, the voltage regulation of a is defined as this uh, EPS minus BPS by BPS into 100. This is called as the voltage regulation of an alternator. Okay. See, generally now the voltage regulation of alternator is uh, uh, you can conduct by three methods. Okay. So, first one is the synchronous impedance method and the second one is the uh, ampere turn method and the third one is the zero power factor method or also called as the ZPF method. Okay. So, see that is uh, circuit arrangement is there. So, this is your circuit arrangement. Okay. See, first one is the starters. This is starter of the alternator. Okay. So, the alternator is generally moved with the help of a one prime mover. Okay. So, prime mover is there. Prime mover is coupled to the starter of the alternator. Right? Okay. And another one is the field excitation is, uh, uh, it is given by a variable supply, DC supply. So, the DC supply will be varied with the help of a potential divider. Okay. And another one is, one load is connected. Okay. So, to perform this open circuit test now, so first this uh, uh, alternator will have to run with a synchronous speed, okay. So, one voltmeter is connected across the, uh, the starter winding. So, it will give the line voltage. The line voltage can be converted into phase voltage here, okay. So, one more thing here, uh, one excitation is given by a DC supply. That DC supply also varied with the help of a potential divider, okay. So, if you change, first you have to run the alternator with the help of a, between a synchronous speed, okay. First you have to run this alternator up to a synchronous speed. And then now the, in the open circuit test, there will be no, lo, no load is connected. That's why it is called as a open circuit test. Okay. So here the switch is make open here in this test here. So now, so with the help of potential divide now, you have to change the field current. You have to change the different field current. So when you will give the different field current to the starter winding, now what happens? So different voltages, different open circuit voltages will be given by this voltmeter. So it will give the, uh, with the help of voltmeter, you can, uh, you can show that is uh, different, uh, that is open circuit voltage. For, for different field current, you will get different open circuit voltages, okay. So, you will, uh, you will draw a graph between this, uh, for a different field current and different open circuit voltages. So, you will get, you will, uh, get a graph, so like this. So, this is, uh, the graph is, say, like this here. For different, uh, uh, different field current and different open circuit voltage, you will get it. So, this is called as the OCC, okay. And see, the field current will be taken in the x-axis and this uh, uh, that is open circuit voltage will be taken on the y-axis. Okay. So, with the different value of field current and different uh, voltage of open circuit voltage, so we will get a graph like this. That is, uh, this graph is called the OCC. Okay. So, this is the open circuit test. Okay. So, after performing this open circuit test, now you have to perform that a second test that is called the zero power factor test. Okay. So, for zero power factor test now, For zero power factor C, here what to do? First you have to run this alternator. So circuit diagram. So from this circuit diagram, now what to do? See in the open circuit circuit test now the switch is open. Make cap open open here. Okay. Now so in the uh, that is uh, to perform the zero power factor test, so you have to make the switch close. You have to make the switch close so that a inductive load will be connected to the starter winding. Okay, so inductive load, a purely inductive load will be connected to the starter winding here. See, when this uh, purely, purely inductive load means what? So, that means where the power factor is zero. Where the power factor is zero or phase angle will be 90 degree. 
the phase angle will be 9 degree that's why in some cases that's why this test is called the zero power factor lagging test okay zero power factor uh, lagging test also it is called as okay so that means in a pure when you will in a when you will uh, insert a pure inductive load okay so in a pure inductive load no the cos phi will be cos phi will be zero okay so that's why uh, also called this uh, test is called zero power factor test okay so to perform this uh, power factor, zero power uh, test no so what to do now the switch will be closed here okay now when the switch will be closed the alternator will be draw is load current the alternator will be low draw is load current okay from the that is alternator okay so so to face it or uh, to maintain see what are the current will be drawn uh, from the alternator that is load current that load current you have to maintain constant either by varying this load either by varying this uh, uh, inductive load or by varying this uh, excitation by varying this excitation and load so you have to maintain the load current as a constant current okay see in a alternator uh, uh, there will be some specification with there a rated current will be will be given in the every machine okay that current you have to maintain that current you have to maintain at any cost okay by either by changing the excitation or either by changing this uh, load that is load inductive load okay so so in this way you can perform this zero power test okay so if you if you uh, maintain this load current by varying this excitation and zero that is inductive load no so you will get some points here so with the help of this reading now you can uh, you can draw this is zero power factor zero power factor curve here so like this it will come okay so this is called the uh, uh, zero power uh, full load zero power saturation curve so to draw this curve now there will be two points are required here so one point will be called as the p and another point is called as the a so you have to find out what is the these two points a and p okay so now first to draw this curve no so after performing this uh, the zero power factor test so you have to perform the you have to find out what is the two uh, two points one point is a and another point is p okay this point a is, is having two coordinates one coordinate will be in x and y coordinate okay so this point a specify that is that is the uh, zero voltage zero voltage at short circuit condition so what is the field current required okay so to get this point a no so first one is zero terminal voltage at short circuit condition and the field current required to deliver full load arm short circuit arm current so this will give you the point a this will give the point a here that means zero terminal voltage at short circuit condition at short circuit condition only you will get a zero voltage okay and and the field current what is the field current required to deliver this uh, full load short circuit armature current okay so to uh, draw this short circuit armature current what is the field, what is the excitation required what is the excitation required to draw this short circuit armature current okay that is uh, with this point now you will get the point a so next one is the point p the point p point p specifies what is the that is full that is <clears throat> field current required to obtain the terminal voltages what is the field current required to obtain the terminal voltage while deriving, uh, delivering the full load arm current because why i already told you so you have to maintain the load current either by varying this uh, uh, inductive load or by varying this excitation okay so this is the uh, you now you will get the point p here with the if we, once you get this two points a and p you know now we can draw this gra graph here okay okay so now you can uh, get this so a and p so once you get this a and p no now if to the so next uh, procedure is to how to draw a proteo triangle how to draw a proteo triangle here so to draw this proteo triangle so first you have to do so make a line make a line tangent to the occ curve okay so make a line tangent to the occ curve that is called as the ar gap line that is called as the ar gap line that is see already uh, seen in the graph itself so in the uh, y axis it will be terminal voltage or induced emf and the x axis it will be the field current and see the uh, you have to draw a line tangent to the occ curve that is called the air gap line okay so this is uh, air gap line so once you got this from point p see this is the point p here so from point p draw a line parallel and equal to this oa okay so draw a line from point p so equal and parallel to the oa here so this is the 
this OA, that's is OA and PQ will be remaining same. Okay, OA and PQ will be remaining same here and parallel to each other. Okay, so from Q draw a line parallel to this air gap line. Okay, so from Q draw a line parallel to the air gap line. So it will be QR and join this R and P. So you will get a uh, triangle here that is PQR. You will get a triangle. That triangle is called as the Portier triangle. That triangle is called the Portier triangle. So once you got this Portier triangle, so now draw a line perpendicular from R to the PQ. So it will be caught at S. It will be caught at S. That is RS. Okay. This RS will be give the armature leakage reactors drop, IAXL drop. Okay. This RS, this RS will give the Armchurch Rickey's reactant drop that is that is IAX, IAXL drop. Okay, so once you got this IAXL now, so this PS, this PS is the field current required. That means the PS is the field current required to uh, balance the demagnetic effect of the armchurch reaction. Okay, this PS is nothing but the, uh, the, the that is the field current required to overcome uh, the demand effect of the armchurch reaction. Okay, now PS. So now see, once you got this triangle, so now the thing is how to find the voltage regulation of an alternator. Okay. So to find out this voltage regulation of an alternator by ZPF method, so some procedure also have to follow. Okay. So the procedure so will be like this. So these are the things uh, I have shown you. So these are some points to be followed. So while you are drawing this, uh, <coughs> that is a portrait triangle, there are so many steps are there. So by following these steps, you can find out or you can draw the Port your triangle that is PQ1. Okay, so from this uh, graph itself. Okay, and see now say <coughs> so once you draw this uh, uh, port your triangle, so from this triangle you can find out that is armchair reactance can be obtained as that is length of the RS. I have shown you that PQR and from R you will draw a perpendicular to the PQ, so it will be called as S. This RS, this RS will give the IAXL drop. Okay, or I and XL. Or XL can be uh, can be found out as length of RS or BC by this uh, that is IA that is arm circuit full load arm circuit okay so you can find out now here by this way you can find out this XL this XL is called the also called the portier reactance okay so once you get this XL now uh, you can find out the voltage regulation of an alternator so these are the some points I have shown you see so this is your RS RS is the IAXL drop. And uh, that is uh, BC. RS and BC both are the same. Length of RS or length of BC also both are the same. So, in this way, you can find out this uh, uh, that is what your reactance. Okay. So, next one is how to find out the voltage regulation of alternator by using this uh, uh, the JDPF method. Okay. So, for this, now you have to follow a that is vector diagram. That is, see, first you take a OA as a IA reference, uh, that is voltage reference here. From A, you have to draw A, that is IARA drop, it will be parallel to IA. And from B, no, so you have to draw A, the IA, IA PH, IA, XPH, XLPH, okay. So armchair reaction drop, it will perpendicular to IARA. And uh, the next one will be the armchair reaction drop, okay. IA into XAR, that is armchair reaction drop, that you have to neglect, okay. So similarly, this is the uh, bucket diagram, from this bucket diagram, so you can find out the, uh, the voltage regulation of alternator by the JDP method. Okay. So I have given some steps here. So first you have to do what to do. So draw this both the curves, OCC and JDPF on the graph sheet. Okay. So from the graph sheet, the second thing is, so find out what is the IAXL drop. From the graph sheet, by using the portrait triangle, so you first you find out what is the IAXL drop. Okay. This IAXL drop will be, see, you can find out our length of RS or length of BC, and XL will be can find out by length of RS by the full load armature current. Okay, this is the second step. Third step is so once you get this XL by using this formula that is E1 pH B cos pi into I R A square plus B sin pi into I A XL square. It's root over. You can find out what is the voltage induced. So E1 is the voltage induced, the allowing the armature reaction drop. Okay, so that means this. So you can find out this OC. That means OC is the E1 pH. O, that means if you are allowing the armchair reaction drop, so you will get the voltage E1. That is OC from the graph. You can see it is a OC here. Okay. So 
you are not see you are considering the arm to reaction drop then only, then only you can find out that this is the e1 okay so so next so after finding this e1 now so the fourth point is what are the voltage will be j you get it that is e1 okay what is the voltage induced e1 that is considering the arm to reaction drop so for this voltage what is the what is the field going to require okay so this field can, can be drawn can be you can get it from the occ crop okay so the corresponding uh, field current you can get it from the occ crop that is called the fp1 that is that, that is the excitation corresponding to the e1 okay so the fifth point is the field current required for the for balancing the arm to reaction okay so that is the length of ps okay that is also so this length of ps you can find out from this uh, uh, graph sheet itself that is fr you can say that uh, uh, field current is fr that length of ps into the appropriate scale you taken for the field current in the graph itself okay so so next one is six number so then next already you get it fpa1 and already you get it the fr fr is the field current required for a balancing the armchair reaction effect or demanding effect of the armchair reaction fr so now the sixth point is now find out the what is the resultant of this uh, fr and F, F, fp1 and fr okay so for this now you have to uh, use a quotient rule okay so so fr will be fp1 square plus fr square minus fr into fp1 into the cosine of the angle between the fp1 and fr okay so this is the graph you will show it in the next slide here so this is the case okay so the angle between fp1 and fr so it will be 90 plus 5 if it is a lagging if the load will be lagging here okay and it will be 90 minus 5 if the phi will be leading here okay so this is the case here seven thing so what are the uh, field current you will get it so all the relevant field current you will get it so for this field current so what is the voltage you will get it from the occ okay so that will give the that is e naught that is the voltage induced at no loop okay so that is uh, fr will be uh, the co for corresponding fr what is the voltage induced you will get it from occ core so once you get this eps now so you can find out about the voltage regulation by using this formula that is percentage of r equal to eps minus bps by bps into 100 so that is so you can find out the voltage regulation by using this uh, zpf method okay